Windows Phone 7 series also supports push notifications. And there are three flavors of push notifications with three ways to play. Now, a push notification is when some service out in the cloud calls back your device with no, uh, you don't have to set it up more than once. You fire up your game, contacts the service and says, when you have data for me, I want you to send it my way. And then that's all you have to do. And then the service will update your device. So the first form of push notification is a raw notification. This notification has a data format that's handled by your phone. So your phone and your third-party service agree on what this data format is. If your application is not running, the notification will be dropped because the platform doesn't know how to handle it. A tile notification, you can see in the, the phone UI graphic here, those blue squares, the rectangle of the, the girl paddling the canoe and the Xbox Live logo there, those are known as tiles or tokens. So we have a system whereby a third-party service can update one of these images. So right there on the front page of your phone, you can get notifications from your games. Finally, we have the concept of a toast notification. So if you think about playing the Xbox, when you get an achievement, or when you get that little pop-up that says Beastmaster 3000 is online, that's a toast notification, and the phone supports these as well. Now, notifications are not guaranteed delivery. We do make a best effort to get them to you, but every notification has a time to live encoded within it, and when that time expires, the notification is dropped from the system. It's also important to mention that this is a push-to-pull model. So when you get a notification on the phone saying it's your turn or notified to take some other action in the game, your game may be running or it may not be running. And so it's important for your game, once it fires back up, to go and query the game state from a third-party server. And I should also mention that there's, there's another variation. Maybe it's a fourth way to play, if you want to call it that. If you want a time notification to appear specifically in the Games Hub, there's an additional web service that you can call. It's the Microsoft Games Foundation web service. And that will reroute the notification right to the Games Hub. So you can send it to the front page, you can send it to the Games Hub. So we'll take a look at these notifications. So here's a little visual version of what this looks like. So first, your game contacts Microsoft push notification server and establishes an endpoint for the notification. This tells the system how to find your phone. Then your game sets up its callback and it sends its location URI to your third-party web service. The web service does whatever kind of number crunching it needs to. It goes out and queries the weather. It goes and checks on how the minions are doing at their gold farming, whatever it needs to do. And then it posts that data to the Microsoft push notification service. The Microsoft service will then batch up these notifications and send them to your phone in an efficient manner. And finally, your game receives its notification and can take whatever action you determine. So here's an example of what a tile notification might look like. So again, your notification service contacts the Microsoft push notification server and sets up that endpoint so it knows how to find your phone. Then your game sets up a binding to a shell tile, and it sends its endpoint URI to your third-party service. Your third-party service does its number crunching. In my case, it checks on my minions and see how they're doing with their day's assignment, and it posts the results to Microsoft hosted server. The server then, when it's convenient, when it's efficient, when you have connectivity, posts this information back to your phone. And I can see that today, my minions have done well, and I am pleased. I will consider giving them a day off. Now, the ability to push image updates right to the front page of your phone means that you can give users data anytime they want in a very visible format. So this is a, this is a big deal. You can use this for a lot of ways. So what does push notification do for you? The big thing is that it improves battery life. Because it uses a single persistent connection that's shared among all the mobile applications that want to receive these notifications, we can make very efficient use of the radio's on-off cycle to preserve battery life by sending these notifications in batches, either during the heartbeat or when we've got a lot of 
when we detect that the phone has connectivity. So this also has a side effect of increasing network efficiency. It's a very simple programming model. You don't need a persistent con connection. You don't have a bunch of applications that are all running, all trying to open requests and ping various servers. You can let our back end do the work for you, and you'll find that it's very simple to integrate with existing Web 2.0 solutions. So push notifications make use of two levels of security. There's both authentication and authorization. On the authentication side, between the phone client and the Microsoft push notification server, there's a custom protocol that's combined with a unique device ID for every phone. In addition, between the Microsoft server and your third-party service, you can use either HTTP or secure HTTP. And again, this is the difference between you having a certificate, us knowing who you are, and determining whether or not to throttle the traffic based on that information. There's also a token that's encoded in the phone's notification URI that gets validated with every push notification that is sent 